I believe this is a perfect sized solar generator for both portable and home use. So here we have the core of the system, and that is the battery. It's an amper time 12 volt, 200 amp hour plus battery. You see the shunt right here, which uh, obviously connects and communicates with the gauge down here. Um, if you take a look here at the 4 aught wire, that's very thick. There's my thumb up against that uh, because you don't want to lose uh, a lot uh, as we connect up here with a smaller gauge wire. Uh, also, we have a, a 250 amp fuse here and we have an extra one right here just in case it goes out. I won't panic and I can go look for it. Um, here is the DC fuse area. Uh, this is actually Velcroed onto here. Uh, so if I need to pop this off, that will pull off. And um, again, these essentially run my DC components right here. Um, again, here is the fan that'll come on. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, here is the fan right here that it, it uses. And, and you can see how it breathes in the bottom pulls in air here from the toward the bottom and then at the top of the box where all the heat is uh, it has two vents where the air then comes out here here this is the uh, just running of some six gauge wire and so on we've got 50 amp fuses i'm sorry cir circuit breakers uh, leading us to our 50 amp um, anderson connectors up here uh, we can connect here, that's input or output, or we can connect down here, uh, whether input or output, to these Andersons. Um, and again, here's some of the options you have. Um, we got some USB ports. Uh, we also have a uh, port, which is nice because you can put a USB adapter in there and essentially be up to date no matter what's the newest kind of USBs going. Now, if you want to run just DC appliances, uh, you really don't need to have uh, this top section on here, okay? Because this will run all your DC. This just unbolts right here. As you can also see is that these cables here close inside each other so that um, it sits really nice. It folds right in there perfectly so this can close. And the battery is also watertight in a big rain by simply taking the plug out here where the fan circulates and inserting a small hose that goes right in there and pointing it down so that the water coming down here cannot get into the box. The reason I chose these rigid boxes is because my 200 amp hour battery from Amper Time fits perfect in here. Uh, except for a little bit of trimming. So you have to do a little trimming on these right here. You take about a quarter of an inch off here and here, and then on this side as well, here and here. Uh, I used I used a, uh, a grinder and this tool as well to do that. As you can see, this lid is held up. By this arm here uh, this aluminum piece was put into these holes that are right down here um, and with a good wood or sheet metal screw fits in there really tight and then these are what I use to hold on um, the power uh, the power options what you'll notice here is there's a gap in between the two boxes that uh, really separates the two cooling systems. They don't uh, transfer heat. Also, here is your, um, I got two Anderson style 50 amp connectors here where everything goes in and out of. So when you look at cooling this section right here, the separate box, um, if you notice down here, you'll see that this has been cut out right down here. And there's a, a plate that's over this, but it breathes underneath. So it pulls air from here, 
through here and then exits uh, right out here with these fans here. And so what happens is it can exit out from under here uh, or uh, this can be pulled off as well. And uh, the fan button is right here for that. Again, it's very, very quiet. And, and this comes off right here. And you can see it's kind of tight fit. I wanted to keep it tight so it doesn't move anywhere. And you can see the air moving through here. And you can keep it this way, which is optimum cooling, uh, when this is shut, uh, if you're in a hot environment. Uh, I keep the cooling fans on all the time here and here, uh, just because I, um, I'm in the desert and I just want it cool all the time. And it doesn't draw that much anyhow. This 3000 watt power inverter is bolted in uh, to this case here. Um, and uh, i got a couple other options up here in case you leave this open in the home. And that is uh, a USB and another um, cigarette lighter style uh, plug there. This little license plate light is very inexpensive and um, gets turned on right here and is able then whether you use one or two it is able to light things up at night and draws very little. Just to give you an idea how much a Renogy 3000 watt power inverter how much it pulls simply by itself with no load on it uh, we're looking at without any fans at all going we're looking at 0.8 amps and if we were to turn on the fans uh, with the battery fan on and the inverter on, you're looking at almost an amp that you'd be pulling. I just thought it would be ironic to be uh, charging my rigid batteries with my rigid toolbox cased solar generator. Uh, looks like we're pulling about 5.5, 5.6 amps. Uh, and with this, of course, you could put multiple chargers and run all day, all night. So this is where my home emergency power station turns into my truck power station. Uh, my rigid boxes fit nice in here. There's my air compressor as well. As you can see, my cover slides right off. And now this is where I run all my AC or DC appliances. Also, I have my solar panels up here, 200 watts. Plus, I'd bring another one or two. As you can tell, I'm pulling about uh, 200 watts out of this uh, crazy light. And um, I don't have solar hooked up, but if I did, I could get four panels to pull over 20, but maybe not in this weather. Um, you see here I'm pulling 19.73 amps. I'm at 49.8%. I also have the remote uh, stuck up against the glass here so I can get a little bit better reading on my phone. So under here you can see I have the option to add more solar panels. This makes for a really nice truck uh, solar generator for traveling or for camping or overlanding. I chose this rigid uh, combined boxes uh, idea because this fits perfect in my truck for my application. I really prefer my cart in hauling around my battery because it weighs a lot. Uh, I like the cart because it goes right to the uh, tailgate of my truck and I don't have to pick it up from ground level, which is kind of hard on the body. Also goes to counters or wherever I put it. Uh, but there's also another way that I can haul things around. This is my this Milwaukee kind of portable uh, hand truck, and it just straps to this so that um, it can be hauled around this way as well. So right now you're looking at my charging system. Right up top here, we have my uh, two ways of charging. One is a solar charge controller at 40 amps, and another is a 45 amp uh, DC charger uh, and converter and uh, that actually stays and goes in this box here 
it's also fairly simple to take off the charging system here and and store it to go portable. I also like this 2500 uh, watt generator uh, because you, know, you can use propane as well. So I got a little bit of a sloppy setup here just to give you an idea how this works. What I usually do is extend my dining table, uh, which is actually a part of my top of my truck that comes off. I got uh, 200 watt Rental G solar panels here, and then we have two up here as well and we got a very cloudy day right now what we could do is we could turn this microwave on this is a 700 watt rated microwave looks like we're pulling uh, 86 amps we now have our closed in system without solar connected to it uh, or just the top two solar panels connected to my wanderer charge controller that's inside the truck well you can uh, hear the microwave run in there so you can actually you know close up the truck at this point and uh, drive with your burger in there or whatever and if you're doing a lot of traveling I would recommend the 40 amp DC to DC charger that you can run from your battery uh, to this battery this is my typical setup at home. I have um, connected to my app here. And uh, again, this is all portable, but um, I connect my app here. Uh, then I have my uh, 40 amp uh, fuse coming here. Red typically goes to battery and gray typically goes to my PV. And those aren't interchangeable, by the way. It's important to know that. Uh, also at home, I've got actually have 80 amps of um, charge controller capability. Uh, I've got an Elite uh, Renogy right down here. Uh, it's also very portable to take right off. And I hooked that up to a, a couple or few other 100-watt uh, panels outside. This is the stand that I made that holds my 600 watts of solar array it's adjustable to follow the sun to a certain degree it also folds out and comes apart so that it is very portable just to give you an idea how important it is to have your solar panels directed toward the sun perfectly uh, this is eight o'clock a.m may 1st and let's take a look and see what kind of amps we're getting. Right now we're getting about 28.3 amps. Let's take a look when we set the panels horizontal. Uh, a little flatter, not directly pointed to the sun. Uh, let's take a look at what we get. Well, at this point, we're dropping down 6 amps uh, to 22.4. So right now at the panels pointed the basic direction, not completely toward the sun, plus 200 more watts, which gives me 800 watts of solar. Right now it looks like I'm pulling almost 40 amps, which is perfect for this 200 amp hour battery. This battery is at 67% and this will probably take two hours to get to 100%.